Hammock Campers. Today I'm going to introduce you to my DD Travel Hammock and the mods that I've made to it. The DD works as both a hammock and a bivvy, so this is part one of a two part video demonstrating the DD Travel Hammock. Come on in and I'll show you what it's all about. First I'll show you the general hang and some features of the DD and then I'll show you the mods that I've made to suit my needs. I opted for the XL top which is huge and it means that I can use these walking poles and some extra long bungee cords to create this sort of porch like setup. Obviously in bad weather I can hang it lower at a steeper angle and batten the hatches against wind and rain so to speak but in nice weather it's nice to be able to see in and out of the hammock whilst you're in there. I went for groundhog pegs for such a large top. Obviously the wind can get under it the more fabric there is there, the more of a hold the wind can get, so I've gone for the strongest, bestest, most adaptable pegs that you can get. As far as guy line goes, I'm using the standard black rope that came with the DD XL top. But I've followed a tutorial on hammockforums.net that shows you how to make those lines self-tensioning by adding in a bungee rope loop. So with this loop in place, if the, the wind or the stretch of the tarp changes overnight, this line won't become slack because this bungee section here will take up that slack and it should keep your tarp as taut as it was originally, or as close to torch as possible. The DD tops have these loops on the outside which are designed for you to uh, string the tarp ridge line from the outside. I however opted to run it underneath and I'll show you why. Running the tarp ridge line underneath the top rather than outside allows me to suspend the bug net like this. I created a continuous loop with some bungee cord and then used a simple prusik knot on the ridge line, the top ridge line and a carabiner at the other end to clip it to these loops that are already in place on the hammock. Another feature of the DD hammock is this sort of mini spreader bar for the bug net which is inside that plastic tab there and suspended by this pressing knot bungee cord setup. As far as suspension of the tarp goes, I mentioned already that I run the line under the tarp instead of over. Uh, that was a suggestion in the illustrated Perfect Hang book. Can't remember the author's name, but I am indebted to you. I'll put it up on the bottom of the screen and that suggests using the line underneath and running it round the tree and having the hammock hang in between the suspension for the top. So pretty simply I've clipped a carabiner to a loop at the end of the top at each end and then the line runs through the carabiner and under the top. At this end it runs round the tree and I've created a continuous loop out of bungee cord and prusik knot clipped it into the carabiner at this end, prusik knot at this end so I can adjust very easy again so I'm ready to go whatever the situation. As far as suspension goes the DD hammock normally comes with um, nice black webbing to suspend the hammock but I opted for whoopee slings because they're much easier to adjust and I have that simply strung up using a carabiner clipped to the tree hugger and a, a marlin spike. This tree hugger isn't actually the DD one this is a super duper 
extra long one which I bought online from a company in America. Uh, these are, I think, 13 meters, ridiculously long. I, I just did that because I like to have options. I don't know where I'm going to end up with this hammock and how big the trees are going to be, etc, etc. So I just, I just want it to be safe. But as you can see in this instance, the tree this size, I've got a ton of extra length that I don't need. This here is just an old lace which I've strung up as a drip line. Again, just a prussic knot so I can move it here in case the rain comes in from the tarp ridge line. Obviously running the tarp ridge line underneath the tarp does bring up the possibility of rain getting in. That's a simple fix. That should stop the rain reaching the hammock. A really nice feature of the DD hammocks is this bottom layer is waterproof. So you can use it on the ground as a bivy sack, which I'll show you in part two. But also it's a double layer waterproof bottom, which means you can fill this full of insulation, whether that be a sleeping bag, old leaves, or in my case, a Sinmat Exped 7 I've got in there, which I think is absolutely perfect. It just velcros up like that to keep the mat in place. The first thing you probably noticed was this bright green thing hanging underneath my hammock. That's the DD mesh hammock which I've used as a gear shelf. I've strung it under the hammock by clipping it up here. What I did was I took the original webbing, this black stuff here, and just made a, a small loop. I, ran, I left it run through the channel, made a small loop, tied it off, and then with the webbing from the mesh hammock, I've tied a series of overhand knots and then run it through there and back through one of the loops and clipped it in place with a carabiner. I've done it that way so if I need this gear hammock to hang higher or lower, I can just change which knot it hangs through. So far I've never needed to adjust it, so maybe that's a bit overkill, but it's always nice to have options. While I've got you here, you probably also notice this glaringly silver piece of duct tape above my head. That's a modification that I made to the hammock skin. Basically, I've uh, attached a quilt as an, uh, sorry, a sleeping bag as an under quilt and this mesh hammock. And I don't fancy taking them on and off every night. So I want it all to fit in the snake skin. I, I did try to do that without modding the snake skin and it started to rip so then I just used some layers of duct tape to create a nice wide opening and now it slides on and off. Easy peasy. Moving on to the underquilt. It's not a genuine underquilt, it's a old cheap army surplus sleeping bag that I had lying around the house. It was originally a mummy style sleeping bag which I just cut the foot area out of to turn it into a sort of rectangle with a hood. Um, and then I, rather than stitching it, I just fixed it with duct tape, wonderful stuff. I've basically just clipped this on. The, the DD comes with these loops for sort of tying it out and creating a wider bed, which I do use at one side of the foot end and one side of the head end. Uh, so I clipped it on using these little plastic mitten hooks that I got cheap off eBay. And some bungee cord which I've used as a sort of a whipping knot around a, just a bunched up section of the bag. I did it first, I created the knot and the hook for each end and clipped it to uh, the whoopee slings I'm using as suspension. And then once I had it hung under the hammock I just worked out where would be the best place to grab it and clip it so that it's a nice snug fit. It's not perfect. <laughs> As you can see, there's a big hole here where the cold and the wind and the rain can get in. Um, but I'm traveling mostly in summer. I have tested this in winter and it, it was it was adequate. I didn't, I was toasty and warm basically in my sleeping bag. I've got a Sinmat 7 in there as well, which helps add to the warmth, insulate things. And I've got a three season sleeping bag. So I'm not worried too much about that. Also, this is the first time I've hung in this location. So this isn't, I haven't spent the time getting the perfect sag because I just wanted to get this video made before the rain comes. 
when I'm in the hammock and when I've got it set up to the perfect habit, it sag, it actually does hang quite nice. I think that's it from this end. What else can I show you? Ah yes, we'll go inside. Okay, the main thing of note on the inside is this uh, ridge line here. I've installed an internal ridge line which I can use to hang lamps off, hang a book from, use as a sort of ridge line organizer thing. And this line is just the old stock webbing, suspension webbing. I removed that from the channels and replaced it with whoopee slings. So inside this bug net are two fabric loops and it's a simple matter to run a line between the two once you've found pretty much your, your, your sag then you can run this line through. I've also added a bit of an extra loop so I can use it to hang things at the end, keep them at the foot end out of my way uh, and at the head end I use it to attach my pillow to so that it doesn't get lost when I'm tossing and turning in the night. What else? Ah yes. Here's a little trick, if I just pan you on this way. I learned this from the guy at RV Ops. On the zips, I've just added some strings, basically. A long one at the foot end, short one at the head end. That makes it easier once you're inside the hammock to zip everything up. Nothing fancy here, this is just a, a key ring with an old lanyard. You get them. You get them free at conferences and festivals, etc. As a conference photographer, I have a ton of them, so I've used them here just to attach to the zips. And this is just some bungee cord. Oh, what another thing I should mention, I can show you while we're in here, is uh, there's really, once you've got that Cinema 7, there's really no uh, funneling, no, no um, channeling in the middle of your hammock. It's, a, it's always a comfy lay. Some people say to uh, have the sin mat only part way inflated but I prefer to have it inflated all the way and then you don't have to worry about that ridge that ha sometimes it comes in the middle of the hammock and your le legs end up sort of in pockets. I don't like that. The sin mat 7 keeps everything nice and smooth. <sighs> See if I can get in without knocking the camera over. There you go. Easy, comfortable, warm. Honestly, I can't recommend that Sinmat 7 enough, but this is about the DD hammock, not the Sinmat, so we'll move on. In case you're wondering, this thing here on the bug net isn't a feature of the DD hammock. That's my botched attempt at a repair using some super glue and a pair of tights. Uh, I accidentally punctured a hole in the net by trying to pack it away in snake skins with those spreader bars for the bug net in one of the hammock pockets. <laughs> uh, and the less said about that, the better. Speaking of the pockets, I'll just quickly show you. Here it is here, currently storing some hooks. There's two of these at each end. One on either side of the head end, and one on either side of the foot end. Just briefly before I pack up, on a nice day like this, when the sun's out and I don't need the rain fly, I don't need the tarp, what I intend to do is fashion a similar sort of bungee loop with carabiner as I had on the inside. Just loop it through here, and clip it over the... There you go. So I'll have the bug net off my face, and I'll still be able to see the stars and enjoy the sunshine and whatnot. As promised, here's a shot of the top and the hammock in their respective snake skins. You can see I've used two skins for the top. I'm, I keep calling them snake skins, but these are hammock skins direct from DD. They cinch together at the end with just a toggle like this at each end of the skin. You can see the relative length, yeah? I'm using one skin for the entire hammock. I've had to modify it at this end with some beautiful silver duct tape uh, to make it wider to fit the, the hammock, the mesh hammock and the underquill all in so I don't have to unclip everything all the time. Uh, and I'm using two skins for the tarp. I don't think you can even 
see the full length of it, it goes off in the screen, but it, the XL is extra large. That's it, basically. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in part two, where I'll demonstrate the DD setup as a bivy with Mozzie Net.